Good morning and welcome back. It's now 841. COVID-19 most commonly presents with respiratory symptoms, including cough and shortness of breath, but digestive symptoms can also occur in patients with or without respiratory symptoms. Joining me now with more is Dr. Michael Pico, a gastroenterologist from Mayo Clinic. Dr. Pico, thank you so much for talking with us this morning. Well, thank you very much for having me, appreciate it. Over the past few weeks, we've been hearing about different symptoms, everything from COVID toes to pink eye, and then of course, shortness of breath. But what are some of the gastrointestinal symptoms associated with this virus? Probably the most important one is loss of smell and taste. Those come on uh, often acutely prior and may actually predate some of the other symptoms. So that is becoming very, very important symptom with regard to screening for this. There is also a certain percentage of patients who actually will present with diarrhea. Uh, of course, diarrhea is very common in the population always, but in this light of this COVID epidemic, that could be a significant symptom that might indicate that a person is infected. It was last week, I believe, I spoke with a woman uh, locally from Atlantic Beach, and she was very open with uh, her story on COVID-19, and she said that is how her, uh, her journey began, and that was with the loss of taste and smell, and it wasn't uh, just with rudimentary items around the house, but it became very apparent. How is it doctors are going about relating these specific symptoms, such as the loss of taste and smell to COVID-19? Well, I think it comes out from the, uh, individual communications with patients, but also guidelines and information that is uh, given out by the Centers for Disease Control, NIH. Uh, these symptoms are out there for people to look for, but I think it's getting out in the population through communications with providers, but also on the national scene about these are becoming very prominent symptoms that up until, uh, if you look back a month or, or or earlier than that, they weren't considered symptoms, but now they're actually considered very common symptoms with this. At the time I spoke with her, she was about 10 or 12 days post that fever, but she still did not have taste or smell. Will that come back? Typically it does, but again, we're still learning a lot about this virus and don't really have a lot of long-term data. But for the most part, yes, in the, in the cases that I've seen, have, um, it has recovered. Dr. Pico, are there any underlying digestive issues that might put some people at an increased risk for severe illness if they do contract COVID-19? Yes, actually, depending on the conditions that uh, patients have, yes. There are certain conditions, for example, inflammatory bowel disease, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, mm. or other conditions where medications are needed to control it that will have an effect on the immune system. These medications, and because they're one of the goals of the therapies are to suppress the immune system to treat the underlying gastrointestinal disorder, that that can actually make it worse for a patient who contracts COVID-19. This is important, particularly in patients who are on, on what are called corticosteroids, namely a drug called prednisone or drugs mm -hmm. like that. These folks can actually have a worse course with that uh, if they were to get symptoms and develop the virus. Individuals such as the ones you just mentioned, or really anyone at home, if they're having these symptoms and if they do have these underlying issues, any re recommendations from you? Well, I think the most important thing that they're concerned is they should call their doctor immediately. It's very important to have that communication to see if they meet the criteria for testing and to get tested and get tested early. Because immediately understanding what the, if the patient has a virus can help with any um, changes to therapies that might be required in that setting to try to minimize the, the uh, suppression of the immune system or other factors that might make it a worse, worse infection if they were to get the infection. Dr. Pico, we so much appreciate your insight this morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate it.